stop me, Mark. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. Let me try that one more time. Any of y'all not get your coffee this morning? This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know, I was so excited coming down this morning. I, I came from Ellerslie down the Manchester Expressway, and before we hit the Muscogee County line, a few little drops of rain hit the car. And I explained to my wife, the rain comes from the northwest, and so it wasn't going to be raining here. When we got down here, it was raining. <laughs> but it shows how much of a meteorologist I am not. But as we were coming down, as we hit that first light going west on Manchester Expressway, we saw the most extraordinary thing that, I mean, it was beautiful. Chris, not Chris, little Chris, I don't need your help on this. Uh, we saw, not the rainbow that, that people saw down here, but it, it was, it was kind of short, but it was real broad, and it was beautiful. This is what God put in my mind. A few decades ago, there was a guy named Jesse Jackson that started the Rainbow Coalition. He did not create the rainbow. As a matter of fact, he, he uh, tried to destroy what the rainbow stands for. We also know that there's this organization, and I can't remember all the long name for it, but it's made up of people who are homosexuals, and I'm not saying that in a derogatory fashion, but they use the rainbow. They did not create the rainbow. And they have really destroyed what the rainbow stands for. The rainbow was created by God. And this is what I really believe is important, is that God, through that rainbow, has given us hope. And that hope is in Jesus Christ himself. And only in Jesus Christ himself. We're, we're here for a very specific reason this morning. We're, we're not here to protest, as you see people do across our great nation. But we are here to demonstrate, to demonstrate the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. We're here to demonstrate the power of prayer through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm gonna tell you people, I'm excited I, I look, and I'll be honest with you, we were hoping for 300 people this morning. That's okay. We have you here. Amen. Amen. Woo! This is truly a grassroots effort. It, it started last year with the vision that God had given to Chris Littleton. We were enthusiastic. We were inspired, we were moved to continue what we're doing today. Today, obviously, is the second annual Prayer Across America event. And I'm gonna tell you something. Next year, we're gonna have the third annual. Amen. And the year after that, the fourth, and it's going to continue. But what I want to share with you is that this is not the only prayer movement that we have in America. There are people who are doing this across our nation, not particularly on the third Saturday in October, but there are people who are praying. They're lining the streets of America, and they are praying. And people are witnessing, and people are watching, and people are being moved by the prayer that is taking place. I have a passage of Scripture that Ken Grubb and I started using about three or four years ago when we started our monthly prayer breakfast and, and I invite you to come to this as always on the second Saturday at Ryan's on the Manchester Expressway. We start at eight o'clock and we invite you to come and be a part of this. My dream is to fill Ryan's up with people praying on the second Saturday of each month. You can help us do this. You can attend, and you can invite others to come. But Ken and I selected a passage of scripture that we think is very appropriate for what we're doing, and I believe that this, what we're doing this morning, is based on it. It comes from 2 Chronicles 7, 14. 
where God said, and if my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. I thank God that he has uh, created a few institutions for us. I believe the, the first institution that God created was that of the family. One man married to one woman producing children. I think that's important. Another institution that God created was the institution of the church. I believe the church is important. I believe the universal church is important. But I also believe that the local church is important. And we ought to all tomorrow be in a church worshiping God. But God also created the government. That's an institution that was created by God. Unfortunately, in America today, the government has turned against God. Amen. And when you see a national convention or a national political convention vote God out of that convention, then you know that we have problems. Amen. But I want you to know that God is alive and God is well. Amen. God is still the same God he was way back in eternity. He's the same God that he'll be way into eternity. Amen. God never changes. And we as a people, we as God's church, we as God's nation, and I do say as God's nation because I believe that the United States of America was founded on the principles that God sets forth in the scripture. We need to be standing for that, and if we're not standing, we got problems. I want to uh, add one other thing to this, and, and this is something that I read one time speaking at our prayer breakfast. In verses 19 and following in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, it says, However, if you turn away and abandon my statutes and commandments that I have set before you, and if you go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will uproot Israel from the soil that I gave them in this temple that I have sanctified for my name. I will banish from my presence. I will make it an object of scorn and ridicule among all the peoples. As for this temple, which was exalted every day, one who passes by will be appalled and will say why did the Lord do this to this nation to this land and this temple then they will say because they abandoned the Lord God of their ancestors who brought them out of the land of Egypt they clung to other gods and worshiped and served them because of this he brought all this ruin on them people the United States of America is in ruins today but there's hope. Yes. But that hope is founded in Jesus Christ. Yes. And there's only one way that hope is going to be shared. And that's through God's people. Are we willing today to stand up and share that hope with a lost and a dying world? Yes. I believe that we are and we need to be. I, as I was reading my scripture this morning, another passage came to me that I thought was very appropriate for this. Paul wrote in, in Romans chapter 11, he says, I ask then, has God rejected his people? Absolutely not, for I too am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Or don't you know what the scripture says in the passage about Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel. Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I am the only one left and they are trying to take my life. But what, God, what, but what was God's reply to him? I have left 7,000 men for myself who have not bowed down to Baal. In the same way then, there is also at this present time a remnant chosen by grace. People, I want to say one more time that we're not the only people who are doing this. There are thousands across our nation who are doing exactly what we are doing. And we need to let our voice be heard. Not to speak is to speak the loudest. And it's saying that we don't believe what God has to say. I believe what God has to say. I believe the word of God. I believe God. I believe our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. I believe the Holy Spirit is at work in this place right now. And we are taking a stand for what God wants us to stand for. When we line the streets of Veterans Parkway, we are being a witness to a lost and dying world that we believe that Jesus is.
And that's all that needs to be said. Jesus Christ is, and we are his servants. We want to thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, before we, we move on, I, I really want each one of you to get one of these brochures. Ranger Joe's Gotten Country Show. This show was founded uh, two years ago this month. It is about sharing Jesus Christ with the lost and dying world. We used to be on from 6 till 9 a.m. in the morning. We have moved to 3 to 6 p.m. in the afternoon. You can pick up this radio station. Uh, I have been up to, to Newnan on the other side of Newnan and been able to pick it up on a good day, so there's no reason why you can't pick it up. Uh, we invite pastors, we invite people who are in different ministries to come and be on the radio program to share what that radio program is about. Uh, Walter Lunsford gave me something. Thank you. Uh, Walter, where, where are you? Right here. There you are. Uh, gave me a brochure about mom. Will you pray for me uh, before you leave here? Hold your hand up. Walter is one who played the uh, shofar. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he has some brochures. Talk to him about this. This is a movement of families, churches, Mom, Christians. Mom's praying for our children around the county here. So. Yes. So see, see Walter about that. I believe the greatest citizens of any nation are the Christians. And when I say Christians, I'm talking about people who have honestly, truly, and sincerely accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord. People who are living for Jesus. I believe that we are the greatest citizens on the face of this earth. And in so doing, we stand up for the government that God created. This morning, and I don't remember if we did this last year, I'm sure that we probably did, but we want to take time to say our pledges. We want to take time to say our, we want to uh, say the pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Then we will say the pledge to the Christian flag, and then pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the pledge to the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one brotherhood uniting all Christians in service and love. And then the pledge to the Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Father, hear me. 
Father, make it right and use my generation to heal the nations crying out. I won't delay, I won't hesitate.
we look with expectancy, Lord. We know that you're going to do a great and mighty work, Lord. And we ask that you would use us. Here we are, Lord. We love you and we just want to exalt you this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together.
just ask that you would truly help us to love one another, Lord. God, I just pray that your church all across this nation would love, that we would love, that we would be just like you, Lord. And Lord, as we come before you, Lord, and we go out and we're getting ready to go out and pray, Lord, I just ask that you would clean us, Lord. Help us to be humble, Father, just like you were, Jesus.
Amen, Lord Jesus. We do declare you as the God of this nation. Thank you that you're the God of Columbus and Phoenix City and the whole Chattahoochee Valley, Lord. God, we welcome you. We ask that you would pour your spirit out in this valley, Lord. That you would tell all the dry bones to rise and come back to life, God. We ask that you would do what Ezekiel saw, Lord. That these people who are stuck in their lives, who are stuck in religion, Lord, that they would be set free and come into a relationship with their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just declare the name of Jesus. We just pray that you would be Lord and God over the city and over this nation. We love you so much. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Good morning. Um, at this time, I want to ask uh, Dave to come up from the uh, CMAs. Um, he's going to explain just a little bit about uh, what they're about and their ministry. Uh, so if you will. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, thanks for having me out here uh, and inviting CMA to come and support you. Uh, just a little bit about what CMA is and what we do. We are the Christian Motorcyclists Association. And if you look on our uh, little banner up there, our colors, as you see, as you see on my back and on uh, Rick's back as well, that is our back patch. And our charter is Riding for the Sun, S-O-N. So we are a motorcycle association, not a motorcycle club. There are big differences, uh, which I won't go into today. But what we do is, uh, our, our motto is saving the world one heart at a time. And what we do is we go to motorcycle events, uh, wherever anything motorcycle related is taking place, and we interact with the people that are there. As you know, uh, just basic public knowledge, what you may see on television or hear in the news, uh, and past history, 60s, 70s, early 80s, motorcycle clubs were notorious for being criminals and causing trouble wherever they go. And CMA was founded by a pastor who wanted to take the word to the bikers. And he did that. He went to where they were because he knew they weren't coming to the churches. And so continuing that 28 years later, that's what we're doing, is we're taking the word of God, the love of Jesus Christ, Amen. to those that are most uh, distraught, broken down, and basically in their hearts they're rejecting Christ and the love that he has to share with them. And we don't try to draw them in by beating the Bible over their head or anything of that nature. We meet them where they are. We associate with them. Uh, the best way to do it is one or two. We'll go meet one or two and kind of get to know who they are. Recognize, and through conversation and just hanging out with them, you begin to learn what their troubles are, what their issues are. We never go out, and if you look in, in our emblem there, you'll notice in the middle of it, of course, is the Bible, the Word of God, our sword, but over top of that is praying hands. That is how we are effective, through prayer. We start off every mission, we pray. We're constantly in prayer. Whenever we stop somewhere, we pray. And so that we are continually being covered in prayer and going to the Father and seeking His guidance in everything that we do. And again, back to what our mission is to reach that, uh, those lost and dying one heart at a time. And uh, hopefully we can uh, impact the motorcycle community. Uh, worldwide, we have over 160,000 members, active and non-active. We have at least that many that have signed up. And we have about 40 members right here locally. Every spring, when the motorcycle season officially starts here in Columbus, there are secular motorcycle clubs that won't allow their riders to begin the riding season without being blessed. This past April, we gathered up uh, at the other end of Victory Drive at Commandos, nice large parking lot, had over 180 motorcycles there that were prayed over and blessed. And we had over 20 decisions for Jesus Christ out of that group. Woo! Yes! Amen. 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 And many, many rededications. 
Because, you know, as young, young folks here in the South, they do hear the word, but a lot of them, as they grow up, they leave it. They'll leave it behind. So a lot of people recognize that uh, they need to come back. Uh, worldwide, there's been millions impacted by what uh, the Christian Motorcyclist Association has done. And I, I don't want to take up a lot of time going into the details, but uh, millions, millions have uh, heard the word of Jesus because of CMA and how we uh, reach out all around the globe. So right now today, as we're here gathering and you're gathering and preparing to hit the street corners of Columbus, Georgia, just to proclaim the word to the public. We have ministers for Jesus that are, that are going right into motorcycle events up at the Harley Davidson store here over in uh, Opelika at the Harley Davidson store today. They're going to be there because there are events taking place and they're going to be sharing the word of Jesus and just being a presence, reaching out, finding out what you need helping you out that's what we do and it's specifically that is our mission field it's the motorcycle community so I appreciate today as you pray on your street corners that you remember the Christian Motorcycle Association and those people that are out there uh, impacting the motorcycle community for Jesus Christ thank you personally want to thank each and every one of you for having the dedication to come out here today. You could have woke up this morning, looked out and saw the rain and just went right back to bed, but you didn't. And I, and I thank you so much for that. I, uh, I don't want to miss anybody, so I'm not going to name each sponsor for this event. But I will tell you, if you will go to the website, which is www.prayacrossamerica.tk, we do have a page for sponsors. And if you would like to help sponsor next year's event, please let me know. Uh, the shirts, all the shirts were free this year. All that money was donated by sponsors and uh, made that possible so that everybody could have a shirt this year. Our advertisement was done for free. Um, people have just come together. The first year we did this, I stressed myself completely out trying to put this event together. This year, I put it in God's hand and things Amen. fell together. Amen. So, with that being said, I have a small prayer that I would like to read. And then I'm going to have Mark Swift come up and he's going to dismiss us. And people... Thank you, and be prepared to come back next year. Spread the word, let everybody know about this event so we can feel this grass in a rally, and then we can feel these blocks. And one day, the mission is to reach Washington, D.C., starting right here. All right. Our Father in heaven, giver of all life, and our author of all good, all things good, we entrust our great nation into you, your care. For it was you, our good shepherd, whom our fathers, founding fathers, followed. You are the creator and grantor of our cherished rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness all are forged by your loving grace. Guide our leaders in the path of righteousness and justice. May their service to our nation be honoring to you. And may their decisions reflect your will. Remind us that true happiness is found only in Christ. Protect our men and women who fight for our freedom. Bless your church to shine and drive out the darkness in our city. And remind us that your kingdom is not a red state nor a blue state. Your kingdom is not of this earth. So we plead with you, bring conviction to our hearts 
and revival to this land. Send your Holy Spirit to open your hearts, to open our hearts, and come dwell with your people. Today we honor our Creator, our Lord, our Father. Thank you for your grace and blessings. May you continue to bless our nation. We pray to you in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. You are Mark. All right. Um, prayer, prayer stemming from the Word of God. So let me read to you uh, just a brief few scriptures here. It says this. It, 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 12. It says, Yes, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of, knowing of whom you have learned. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come to you. In these last days, perilous times have come. God, we ask that you would anoint our time together. Lord, open up our hearts in prayer. God, get our attention right now in Jesus' name. Lord, that we would trust in you, that we would pray from the depths of our soul and our spirit, God, that you would convict us, dear God, that we would pray according to your will, Lord. Father, for some of us, we need a wake-up call even right now. Wake up, church. We are the church, Lord. Help us to be awake. Help us to be alive in you, Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for revival right here, right now with this group of people. God, revive us, Lord. We need you, God. We cry out to you right now, Lord. We can't do this thing on our own, Father. Lord Jesus, people are dying right now, Father. Babies are being aborted, God. Father, stop the abortions, Lord. Father, we pray for the LGBT agenda, God, that you would shut it down and save those souls. Lord, we pray for marriages, Lord, that are being dis destroyed and broken up, God, that you would set them free, God, and bring them back together, Lord God, according to your word, Father, that no, no more divorces, God, please shut the divorce systems down, Father. Please close the divorce lawyers' offices down, Father. Lord, we pray you do a great work, Lord Jesus. We pray rebuke the enemy, Lord. Rebuke Satan, who wanted to deceive our children. Lord, we have children right here running around, Father. We pray over them in Jesus' name protect them God from these false agendas of Satan father and we pray father that you would be with us as we go Lord anoint us Lord use us this morning father may we be a shining light father may these blue shirts speak glorious things father to those who drive by today that they would know that they're being prayed for and Lord when they see these crosses God that you would anoint even the crosses Lord the, the healing is not in this cross but it's in the cross you hung upon Dear Jesus, you shed the blood. And so, Father, we ask that you anoint us, Lord God. Use us, Lord, as a picture of grace and love and mercy, God, for we don't deserve it ourselves. It's unto you, Lord Jesus. So, Father, forgive us right now for false motivation. Forgive us, Lord God, for, for false humility. Forgive us, Lord Jesus, for all these things that we do, Lord. Forgive us for our sin, God. Forgive America. In Jesus' name, forgive America, God, and help us, God, repent and come back to your saving grace. And Lord, use us, Lord, for your glory. Father, we pray one day, one day we'll be in your arms. We look forward to that time. But until then, God, help us to speak, to live loud and to speak loud for you. In Jesus' precious name, and all the saints shouted, Amen! Amen. God bless you. You dismissed your block. Have a great prayer time. Thank you for coming out on behalf of all. Thank you so much. God bless you. God sent his son. They
Chapel, and we've got some folks here from Benning Hills Baptist Church, and we're just out here praying across America today, and we're just thankful for what God's doing, and uh, just really want to see revival in this city, and everyone here, and everyone up and down Veterans Parkway is excited to see what the Lord's going to do, and we're just praying that God would move in this city and in our nation, and we just believe, we're a group of people that believe that prayer is really the answer, so we're out here just praying and also pointing people to Jesus Christ. The cross is representing, you know, that place where Jesus paid the price for everyone. Yes. No matter who you are, what you've done, you know, Jesus Christ paid the price for all people. Um, whatever race, whatever ethnicity, whatever group, person, it doesn't matter. Jesus died for all. And so that's why we're out here. And we look forward to next year as well, as you mentioned. And uh, 2040 would be, be a great time if we're still here. And uh, we just pray that between now and then we can reach as many people for Christ and pray for as many people as we can between now and 2014, October 19th. And uh, next year will just be hopefully another time where we can gather together and worship God together and pray for the, the, the people. It's really about the people, praying for the people. Yes. So thanks a lot for coming out and 
God bless America. Yeah. God bless our soldiers, too. Amen. My name Amen. is Bertha Brown, and we're here representing Benny Hills Baptist Church, and we just thank God for this privilege to come boldly and stand and let the public know that we are not ashamed of this gospel of Jesus Christ, but it's the yeah. power yeah. of God saving everyone that we wish that more would come out and take a stand for Jesus and let the world know He's our God, He's our Savior. And I pray that this will be our last time, that many more will come next year. And we will just come out, and many, many, many will come out to say that we are the kingdom of God, and we represent Jesus in a way that he will be pleasing to him, that more will come to be a part of his family. Because we come out and lift him up as our Savior and our Lord. How did you, yes. feel, about, how did you feel about the event this year? Uh, pretty good. Okay. Yeah. And so what did you pray about? that everybody would become Christians before Jesus comes back. Amen. Amen.
Thank you.